Hello, good afternoon. Uh, this is our classroom acoustic design. We have posed for the current the classroom where we take classes. The team is uh, conformed by Mariana Orozco and myself, Daniel Trevi. This is the floor plan before the intervention. As we can see, it's very simple. It's just a uh, four. Um, composed by four windows, a, a door, and well, the walls and the uh, uh, whiteboards. And we can see also an isometric view before the intervention. And, and it's um, like the base where we started off before we designed it. And then we calculated the Reservation of the classroom, considering the materials of which the floor and the walls, uh, columns and the ceiling. Uh, mostly it is made by concrete, but the important thing here is that the reservation was very, very high. So that means that the acoustic treatment um, of the classroom was poor. And well, in the classroom, the acoustic is a very important aspect. The reservation before the intervention was of 2.25. Some of the then, sound effects that are present in the classroom are shadow, flutter echo, concentration, and echo. The shadow, it is, uh, it does exist in the classroom because the uh, students generate the defect of shadow because the people sitting in front will absorb the, the noise and the people at the back won't be able to listen correctly. The filter echo also exists because, uh, because of the walls and the ceiling and the floor are all par pa parallel, so the sound bounces off the walls and the floor and the ceiling. There is no concentration presented in the, in the classroom because there's no curves. And echo, it doesn't exist also because it's not that big to generate the echo. So uh, we needed to uh, design a new proposal that, uh, that eliminated the the flutter echo and the shadow. So uh, well, here you can see unfolded elevations of the four walls and the floor plan. Firstly, as you can see, we designed a new furniture to avoid the shadow effect because it is not like in a definitive row, uh, like uh, five rows of uh, tables and chairs and and columns. It is it is um like it is not in order and you can have many accommodations as, as the students wished. Then uh, in the ceiling plan, we used uh, Uzi Blots uh, panels in the ceiling at different heights. You will see it later in the sections and we implemented a uh, new uh, lighting fixtures. This is a closer look of the elevations. We also placed these uh, wooden panels so the sound uh, can be absorbed there. In this first section, we see the wall that is at the back of the classroom, and we implemented 41 pieces of wave panels, uh, well, installed in this wall, and the su surface cover is of 6.56 square meters. And then in, in the ceiling, you can appreciate the different heights of these panels. It is another uh, uh, model of panels in the ceiling. And these two materials are for the acoustic, acoustic treatment of the classroom. And uh, finally, another adjustment is that the wall at the right, it has an inclination uh, to break this parallelism from the other wall and then um, eliminate the, the defect of the flutter echo. Here is another section. As we can see also the bussy blocks uh, on the ceiling. 
and we can also see the uh, lamps that we proposed also. And we also uh, decided to change the whiteboards to mobile whiteboards so it could be a little bit more dynamic and the classroom shouldn't be that, uh, well, boring. And finally, the uh, wall closest to the door uh, are the real acoustic perforated panels that uh, my teammate mentioned. We used 20 pieces in total and um, that in this way, the reverberation would be, uh, uh, well, lesser than before the intervention. And these are some isometric views and renders we did for the classroom. So our idea can be more specific and can be interpreted correctly. So finally, in, in the estimate of the reverberation, we reach uh, almost a uh, zero point five of reverberation, and that was our goal because the range was between uh point four to uh, point six. So we have a very uh, uh well range and. This thanks to the materials, the wave panels, the perforated acoustic panel, and the pussy blocks panels in the ceiling. Here we can see the inclination on the wall, so we can break the parallels of the walls. Uh, the uh, colors we uh, used it's like from a gold color palette uh, because in the place we live well, it is a humid and hot place so uh, we kind of wanted the space to look uh, kind of cold and modern and young uh, at the same time so we think uh, that this classroom will help us students uh, architecture students well, who spend most of the time in front of a computer, uh, have a pleasant time in the classroom. The first material we propose are the wave pens. These are located at the back of the classroom, as we saw in the renders. These work because of the material they are made of, and it doesn't reflect or bounce the sound off, and it absorbs it. These are some noise reduction coefficients that the material uh, has. So, uh, because we uh, couldn't use the same panels as we did in the walls, we searched for another supplier. And we found this space, and they have these panels, which can be installed in, in walls, but we use them in the ceiling. Uh, the exact... Uh, the, model we used is the ETSA 12, and here, here are the dimensions of this panel. For the installation of the ceiling, we require uh, a wire uh, and screws in order to mount it in the, the ceiling. The last material we propose are the periphery acoustic panels by the acoustic. This is a material based of MDF, and it has a thickness around 16 to 12 and, and 12 millimeters MDF. Uh, the weight is around 7.5 kilograms, so over square meter. And the formats we use are 120 times 60. Oops. Here's an image of the installation on the wall, which is our case. It, it's just a frame on the back, and you can uh, place the panels in this frame. Here's a closer look of the frame we just talked about, and it's a collocation. And that is all of our presentation. Thank you for listening.